Okay, uh, my name is Eugene Smith. I'm the Senior Vice President and Director of Athletics at The Ohio State University. You've been a part of this enterprise for a long, long time. And so when you think about the work of the Rice Commission, where do you rank this in terms of sort of those inflection points for college sports and what this means to the to the business and the enterprise at large? You know, I, I think I rank it right up there at the top of the pyramid. Um, you know, you're causing me to kind of uh, have a flashback here. I have to think back over the years and in different moments in time in our industry uh, where we created a a group or, or dealt with a particular issue, um, I would probably say um, this is right up there. This is in that top one, two, or three um, because of how it's done as an independent uh, organization uh, chaired by someone the magnitude and stature of, of Condoleezza Rice, uh, a commitment uh, by the association to uh, actually implement uh, the recommendations that will be emerged that will emerge without even seeing those recommendations. I mean, there's whatever that's going to be announced next week, it's going to happen. Uh, we've never had that before. Uh, the makeup of the group, uh, we've had similar ones, but not at this level uh, of expertise. So uh, I would say in, in our history, yeah, yeah, this is probably right there at the top of the pyramid. And the issue is right there at the top of the pyramid. You, Jeremy Foley, and Jeff Hathaway, the three athletic directors, at least. And there were some coaches and others. Right. But for, for the insiders to the enterprise, what was the biggest thing you learned? Or, you know, because, uh, that's because for you to learn something means everybody's learning it at this point, right? right? What, right. what were some of the biggest things that you learned through this process? Well, there's the things that were, were happening. Uh, we kind of had an understanding of what's going on with uh, third-party involvement with student athletes prior to coming to college. Um, we kind of knew, but uh, actually to see how the money actually flows, to see where it came from, how it was managed, how it got to somebody um, in a quantifiable, tangible way, uh, that was eye-opening for me. Uh, then I'd say secondly was the, uh, which is kind of refreshing and I hope we implemented as we move forward around other issues uh, is having people uh, that are the statue and presidents of Akandi, uh, Father Jenkins, uh, uh, Catherine Rumeyer, uh, former general counsel uh, to in the White House, uh, people like that who um, aren't practitioners in our world, uh, but are highly educated, uh, great strategic thinkers, uh, ask the right questions to make us think about why we are where we are, why we do what we do. Uh, just a third party thought. Uh, so uh, I found that really refreshing. Uh, we had it before in different ways, but not like this. And so I hope it becomes a model uh, for how we deal with issues in the future. So what do you ask when, these, when the recommendations are coming out or a week or so, 10 days away, what do you ask of your peers to, um, to do once this comes out to, to help make a difference? Yeah, well, when it comes out, you have to look at the entire package. Don't look at each individual piece. Look at all of them in an integrated way. Uh, what's happened over time, over the last four decades, is this culture we inherited, we have. Uh, so to change it, it's, it's gonna take a number of different things. And so look at it as a package uh, and embrace it. You know, there'll be certain elements that you love uh, but but embrace it and, and, and try and support it. And, and those things that you really like, talk about them positively. And then if you have an idea, you have a different thought that wasn't brought out in the recommendations, remember there is a governance structure to put those things on the table to be considered. Uh, so we're gonna miss something. I don't know what it is, but we're gonna miss something. Uh, and I hope that our colleagues will come forward and, and uh, put those in the mix. Um, there, you talked a lot about this isn't like a flip, a, a switch that's going to be flipped. Like all of a sudden, college basketball is going to be right. righted. The ship's yeah. going to be righted, yeah. here, right? Like, I mean, it took a long time to get here. It's going to take some time to mm -hmm. undo. So, talk a little bit about that bigger picture of presidents, coaches, ADs, time, everything to change the culture of, you know, and Next week's an important step, but it's right. not the only step. That's right, that's right. You know, we're gonna have legislation in play and, and different concepts that will ultimately be implemented. And 
Uh, but we have to change our, our behavior. We have to create an environment that's stronger in accountability. Uh, presidents uh, have to be more accountable relative to actions at their individual place. Uh, athletic directors as well as coaches. We have a tendency uh, to put everything on the coaches. And that's wrong. Uh, at the end of the day, they, they report to someone. They report to athletic directors. And athletic directors report to presidents. So presidents and athletic directors have to really get involved in this and try and, and shift the culture. Uh, so we need accountability in that way. Um, you know, culture is, is, uh, is an interesting uh, phenomenon. Behavior uh, begets culture. And so accountability is such a big part of, of behavior. And, and we've lacked it. We've lacked it. Uh, we've lacked it among our coaches. Our coaches need to call each other out. Uh, uh, it's so disheartening to hear that, you know, oh, we knew this was going on. We knew that was happening. We, we knew that recruit was paid X. Well, why don't you say something? And so the reality is we need to create a space uh, for people to be able to share uh, what they hear, what they suspect, and what they see. And so um, hopefully uh, we'll change individual behavior, make it people more accountable, and, and ultimately uh, modify to some degree what we have. After all you've seen in this business, do you have hope? That oh, God, yeah. Change? Yeah, you know, uh, this is uh, uh, something we have to deal with. Uh, uh, but we also have to keep in mind, we're talking about a small subset of our basketball population that ultimately are trapped in this space that we're dealing with. We're talking about uh, a small group of young people that are being taken advantage of uh, pre-college. You know, a lot of this is, most of it's all pre-college. So we're trying to f affect the culture in that area. Uh, but there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of young uh, basketball players that aren't affected by this. And things are working. They're getting a quality educational experience. They're having great experience playing the sport at the collegiate level. Uh, and they're going on and have unbelievable careers when they leave. So while we do have this X percent, and it's, you know, it's a single digit percent of young people who are taken advantage of in this space, um, there's thousands of other players that, you know what, they're having a quality educational experience and going from recruitment to career, not just graduation, but recruitment to career. And that's the collegiate model that we all love and enjoy. And so while we focus on this negative, we got to remember there's a huge, huge positive in this space. How did you personally, I mean, you've been involved in a lot of things, but how did you personally grow through this experience and being involved in this independent commission? You know, I think one uh, is, is the, uh, just being in a room with a different level of strategic thinker or in our space. Um, I'm so used to having been on almost every NCAA committee that exists, uh, being in a room with my colleagues, practitioners, there might be some presidents, but having an outside third parties like, you know, Virginia Stetz and, and all the others, uh, Condi, Catherine, all, it, it, it was just, it was really different uh, to have them in the room and challenge us the, the way they challenged us around why we do things the way we do them and how did that come about. Um, and then it was educational, um, kind of spoke to how old I am. <laughs> To, to go back to, you know, how that rule was put in place in the early 80s and why, you know, just so it was really, I learned so, I learned so much the value of bringing in people uh, who are not in our business to give us advice. And, and so we've had that indication. I've had it when I was on the Committee on Infractions, but not to this degree. And so I think it's a model that we need to embrace and continue to do. and. Um, they help us with our issues as we move forward. I learned the value of that in a big way.